And welcome back to End Zone Focus. US President Barack Obama has declared his intention to run again in the 2012 presidential elections, but commentators suggest that there could be a public backlash against him for that country's involvement in the Libyan conflict. And with me now to discuss that issue is Perry Atkinson, who's the political correspondent for The Dove News Channel in Oregon. Oh, Perry, good to have you with us. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Well, it's my pleasure. President Obama says for America not to have acted in Libya would have been a betrayal of, of who you are. What's been the reaction to that speech? Well, I think the, the general feeling for Americans is we certainly want to help those who are innocently trying to become free and liberated from a tyrannical government. The problem is that the president's plan never was spelled out. It still isn't clear. And now it looks like he's pretty much abandoned whatever he thought he was doing and turned it over to NATO. And it's not going over well at all with the American people. Because he's been criticized, hasn't he, for, for committing the military to action without actually going to, to Congress about it. Well, that is a huge issue because he has openly criticized, along with the vice president, before they were elected to president and vice president, of criticizing former President George Bush uh, for not going to Congress, when in fact he not only went to Congress, he went to the UN and he created an incredible coalition of other nations before acting in Iraq. President Obama, on the other hand, uh, just basically arbitrarily under his own design and free will, went into Libya and didn't really even tell the American people what he was doing, what the plan was, and most of all, what the exit plan was. Now that the operations have been pretty much turned over to NATO, and NATO is saying, we don't think we want to handle this. Uh, at the moment, Gaddafi is still in power, and the president, for the most part, has egg on his face because whatever he thought he was going to do hasn't worked. Um, Sarah Palin, um, who's possibly a, a front runner for the Republicans in the upcoming election, Sarah Palin says that if the government was interested in humanitarian reasons for going into Libya, then there are equally good humanitarian reasons for going into somewhere like Darfur or Zimbabwe or, or Syria. Is, is that a, a question that, that people are asking? Yes. Uh, there's a huge list where we can get involved, where there's genuinely human suffering involved. Uh, Libya certainly is a concern. Uh, was at the top of the list? I think many, many Americans are beginning again to ask the question, perhaps not. Of course, the president faces his own battles at home. It was only just last week that uh, he managed to avoid the whole of government being being shut down because the, the budget wasn't being being passed. It's a difficult time for him at the moment because because he can be he can be outvoted effectively by legislators all the time. Well, uh, the potential of the government shutting down last week was very serious. The problem is that we have a, a president and an administration that has put forth a budget that in just this fiscal year alone suggests a $1.6 trillion deficit. In other words, the government, this administration is saying, let's spend money we don't have on top of money that we already can't pay back. It's ludicrous. And the problem that we're seeing in America is that the average citizen, the citizenry of America is waking up to the fact that the government's too big, it's outspent itself, and the burden of this falls on the generations yet to come, and we just flat can't afford it. So it was evenly split in this country to shut the government down versus those who didn't want to shut it down. Now, they did reach somewhat of a compromise on Friday with $38 billion worth of cuts, but $38 billion is just a beginning because we're now talking hundreds of billions of dollars that need to be cut from our budget in order to survive. The president says he intends to work with Republicans uh, closely to, to achieve his aims. I mean, you are a Republican. <laughs> what hope does he have? Well, I think uh, the, the hope for America began to surface this last election cycle. In November, we saw the largest turnover in Congress in, in, since 1930. And uh, it, was, it was a huge turnaround from a very liberal House of Representatives to a very conservative House of Representatives. I think that is stage one Stage two will be in 2012, where it's a good chance the president's going to be replaced. Pretty much now it's, it's being seen as a one-term president. 
and then the Senate will have to be taken over by conservatives. But the genuine move in the country is to get our fiscal house in order, and the ones who most are in favor of that, even making the hard decisions and the cuts where necessary, are the Republicans. The liberals, the Democrats, still want to spend money we don't have. Uh, his chances of recovery now uh, with, the, with the deficit, with Libya, and now we're going into the fact that he wants to raise taxes in order to balance the budget, which is clearly a job killer and is not going to go well with the American people. Uh, I think he's pretty much lined up to be a one-term president. Tea Party has been a very interesting movement within the, within the Republican Party. How much influence has, has that very much a grassroots movement. How much influence has that had on, on the sort of way that, that the president's viewed by the people? Well, the Tea Party is probably one of the largest grassroots uprising we've seen in our country in a long, long time. And for the most part, it does favor the Republican agenda. But when the Republicans don't act like Republicans and don't vote like Republicans and don't remain conservatives, the Tea Party is going to even be louder uh, in representing uh, the grassroots Americans. And I, uh, I think it's a significant force. I don't think it's a splash in the pan. I think the Tea Party is going to be pretty active for many election cycles to come. Now, last time President Obama swept in on a, on a tide of enthusiasm and optimism you don't sound like you think that'll happen again well <laughs> politics is pretty <laughs> strange you know things can happen um, but we've never seen a president go this low so fast into his administration and stay there um, so at the moment the general feeling within uh, America is get rid of him some people on the left, uh, the Democrats, feel he's not liberal enough, and some feel that he's not even looking to them in helping them to get reelected because he's doing his own agenda without consideration of the Democratic National Committee. The combination of all of that, his own numbers within his own party are not solid. Fascinating times indeed. Thank you so much, Perry. It's great to talk to you. Thank you.